very happy new year and may your uh, trading account continues to be uh, on the bullish sentiment all year long trust me i really really hope that and uh, again uh, wish you a happy new year uh, i know you guys cannot wish me back if you can just message me out that will be more than enough giving you a background of quant and st uh, we are a group of traders coders analysts who um, love to teach and share their experience um, as we are a part of one of the largest high frequency trading um, firms in india that is irich capital um, irich and corn industry were founded by uh, technocrats with a uh, passion for financial markets so uh, irich being uh, considering as a topmost carrier in the capital markets for the hft uh, as being in the industry we came to realize that it's a niche for algo trading and whoever wants to learn um, they need to have some resources and that's exactly where we come into picture and uh, since then quantity has helped over a hundred thousand learners across the globe through its educational initiatives uh, just in, in addition to all the uh, learning solutions, uh, Quantinsty provides cloud-based trading platforms with, uh, say, free backtesting daily and minute-level data for NSC and NYSC. So today's webinar is exceptional, I would say that, because um, as today we have the course author of Natural Language Processing and Trading, Terry Benchwall. Uh, Terry has launched uh, this course in using advanced machine learning techniques to quantify news and apply market sentiments in trading. So basically in this webinar, Terry will be uh, describing the use of NLP techniques in the context of building trading strategies for a one day horizons for the uh, say uh, corporate bonds market and um, equities markets using news headlines. Uh, so just to give you a gist that uh, the slide up that you can see is the thing that you will be able to do that uh, after the NLP in trading course that you've been completing up. Uh, so you will be able to perform uh, say train uh, machine learning model to calculate a sentiment from a news headline. Uh, you'll be able to describe the applications of natural language processing and uh, implement and compare the word embeddings methods such as bag of words which is a method to extract features from text documents uh, these features can be used for training ml algorithms uh, that is bow and uh, another one is tf idf that is uh, term frequency inverse document frequency which is a numerical statistic that is intended to reflect um, how important a word is to a document in a collection or corpus um, so basically it's uh, you can see just a scoring measure uh, widely used in information retrieval or say summarization and uh, terry will be speaking in detail for tfidf as well another one is word to vec uh, which is considered to be the most popular technique to learn word embeddings using shallow uh, neural network and the last but not least which is bert and again, I'm not speaking about BERT and Ernie over here, it's just BERT, that is uh, bidirectional encoder representations from transformers. In simple and layman terms, uh, layman like me, um, it can be used to help Google better discern the context of words in search of queries. And um, after that, you would be able to predict the stock returns and bond returns from the news headlines and automate the paper trade strategies covered in the course so i will be uh, sharing you the course link in a chat in a while for your reference and um, just to welcome our esteemed speakers in today's webinars and thanking them for this uh, extremely great opportunity i uh, would like to introduce you to uh, terry benchall who is the founder and principal at Benchol Scientific um, LLC. So Terry has worked as a credit strategist with a focus on client-oriented solutions um, across all credit markets. Before that, he had worked in Chase Manhattan and City, 
group to build algorithms to predict corporate bankruptcy and to uh, detect credit fraud on car transactions. And um, he has authored two books on uh, credit modeling. Another speaker we have here is Ishan Shah, um, who leads the content and research team at Contra by Quant and Steve. Uh, prior to that, he worked with Barclays in the global markets team and with uh, Bank of America Merrill Lynch. Uh, and considering that his background, he has a very rich experience in financial markets, spanning across various asset classes in different roles. So I will be passing on to uh, okay, so just a heads up um, uh, before getting started, uh, I would um, like to ask you a uh, small questions in terms of poll. I've just opened it if you can see. Uh, do you use natural language processing in trading, basically uh, sentim sentimental analysis, if you can just uh, take a poll quickly, it would uh, be a good. Uh... Okay. So the question again is, do you use a sentimental analysis in trading? Um, just give us a poll for yes or no. It would be a good uh, answer for us. Okay, so I've got the poll. Uh, I can see that uh, roughly around 15 to 18 percent. I can see that uh, the attendees are using sentiment analysis, and 83 percent to 87 percent are saying that no, they are not using. So, no worries. It's not like that. You won't understand a bit. You would. Uh, that's why we are here to get you up from 87% to the percent that the people are saying yes to. So, so I have passed on my baton to Terry. Uh, Terry, if you can um, just take things ahead from here, it will be great. Over to you. um get the screen back up again um it just disappeared when you gave me permission um yeah just a sec terry i'll help you out okay there we go all right now I've got to move to the right slide. Do I have control? Uh, again, I lost. Um, uh, Okay, so, uh, okay, Terry, so what I'll do is uh, I'll keep my screen on and you can just, uh, you know, start uh, from there. And whenever you would like to uh, shift the next slide, you can just uh, give me directions and I'll okay. follow your orders. Sure, that'll work fine. Yeah, because it keeps disappearing. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay, no worries. So just give me, just give me a second, guys. I'll be having my screen and... Um, so Terry, can you can you see yes, the agenda? Yes, yes, yes. Now it's back. Very you good. can take over from here and just okay. just guide well, me. We'll now the shifting well, slides. Just um, as far as the agenda goes, and, and hello everybody, and and thank you for attending. And I know we're different time zones around the world, but uh, some of you are up late and others are up early. And so, um, in any case, uh, you know we're going to in this you know little tutorial, we're going to highlight uh, some of the features of the course. And um, my my two topics will be natural language processing in financial markets and different word embedding 
methods, and then Ishan will be talking about aggregating sentiment scores and and uh, and why Quantra you know provides a, a unique learning experience. So um, next slide, please, Vinod. Hello? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, um, okay, so we're, we're gonna talk about how, you know, natural language processing is applied in financial markets. I guess at least, you know, 15 to 20% of you are, are, are actually working on this in general, but a lot of people really don't know. And um, basically what people use natural language processing for in financial markets um, is to gauge sentiment scores. It's a gauge sentiment of, um, printed text reports, um, headlines, um, you know, whether a headline, you know, given your interest in, in either a market or a firm, is a headline positive, negative, or neutral? And um, and then when you get these headlines, right, um, you know, um, you sum them up and, and say overall is this period that I'm looking at a positive, negative, or, 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 or neutral sentiment toward my market, and if it's positive, Tip, the idea would be to, you know, to invest in the market. If it's negative, to either go short or not invest, and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, yeah. So, just a, a little bit of history in general, um, and 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 even in this course, you'll see natural language processing has most often been applied in, in the equity markets to predict price changes over a day or days. And um, and recently, and, and in particular by me and, and, and my associates, we made attempts to apply natural language processing to predict price changes in corporate bond markets. And again, as part of the course, you will see, you know, the work we've done um, on, on, on that. And, um, and again, a little bit of approach. So basically, the general approach consists of first uh, turning words and written text, say news headlines and stories, into digital representation. This is called embedding, and we'll talk a little bit about that even in this um, little um, little tutorial session. But um, these embedded texts are then used to generate the sentiment scores, right? Whether whether a, a news article or headline is positive, negative, or neutral relative to the markets we're trying to predict. And then again, you know, um, we, you know, there there are many news stories that come out, right? And so, you know, each of them has a sentiment score attached to it, and they're summed over a, a given period and used to predict the next period's price change. Uh, next slide, please. Right. So, word embedding methods, and and this is really, you know, one of the core pieces of the of the course because um, this is really where, you know. Where, where much of the uh, the research has been focused on and, and the importance of, of determining, I mean, it, it's not trivial to determine whether a, a news story is, a, you know, associated with positive, negative, or neutral sentiment. And, um, and so, uh, and I'm gonna highlight some of these even in, in this little talk, but again, um, a good chunk of the course um, will, you know, consist of, of looking at these methods in detail. And, and what it what they so word embedding or what what they call embedding is the process of converting text into a digital representation in the computer. And um, in the next few slides, I'm going to highlight several of the most important methods. And um, in particular, it's it's important to note that this is a rapidly evolving field with innovations coming all along. And um, you know, I, um, yeah. So. Um, and, and it's getting pretty complicated and, and the methods are getting very, very sophisticated. Now, the, the methods I'll be, be highlighting here in, 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 in this presentation are bag of words, almost in terms of um, the, the order is in terms of how they've, you know, come into the, you know, into the landscape of NLP. But we'll talk about first bag of words, term frequency, inverse document frequency, um, the word to VEC, embeddings from language, the ELMO model, and the bidirectional encoder representation from transformers or what's called BERT. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So we're gonna take these one at a time. So bag of words, right? Um, again, it's one of the, the, the most simpler, the simplest methods and earliest. And it's really just an algorithm that counts how many times a word appears in a document. So 
um, the, the word counts allow comp uh, one to compare documents and gauge their similarities for applications like search and, and document classification. So in this little table, right, we've got three documents and, you know, you would take each word in the document which would then be a very long vector. This is a short one of, of four four words, but and you look at how many times, you know, for example, in the first row car is represented in document one twenty seven, document two four, and document three twenty four. Right. So these, you know, documents at least one and three are are generally about cars and autos, and um, and so basically it's just a counter. You know, it's just a word count algorithm, and uh, they you know basically can you know can allow us to compare uh documents and gauge their similarities and um and so again it, each of the documents in you know in in the uh, bag of words has a has a vector that contains you know the, the same a vector of the similar length that will you know contain all the words and of course in some documents no words will appear so for example you know in, in document one insurance doesn't appear at all but it would have you know um, that row in its uh, in its vector. So um, of course, one of the things about bag of words, right, is that there's no context. Okay, and we'll talk about that. And and the, the more complicated the you know the models get, um, the 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 more they try to build context into the um, the, the representation. And um, what else? Um, Yes, and then the probabilities uh, that that surpass certain levels will activate nodes in the network and influence the document's classification. So, I mean, the words car, auto, insurance, and best. Well, best might be a a, a positive word, um, but basically, you know, it, it's a matter of of the then um, word, words that are associated most with with positive sentiment that that get the highest classification. Um, next slide, please. Sure, Terry. Uh, just a heads up to all the attendees. If you guys have any questions, you can just drop a chat and I'll pass on to Terry and uh, he'll be happy to answer those. Next slides coming up. Okay, thank you. All right. And, and as Vedant mentioned earlier, he mentioned the term frequency inverse document frequency um, method. And um, and with with the T and also called TFIDF <laughs> for short, which is fortunate. Uh, it basically measures, you know, it was a was an improvement on uh, on the bag of words because it was designed to measure relevance, not frequency. So um, what that means is that um, is that you know words such as the and and the appear you know frequently in documents, so these just get get thrown out. Um, that's the inverse document frequency part. But now, uh, the more documents a word appears in, the less, in this particular case, the less valuable that word in a, is as a signal to differentiate any document. So basically, the, in the TF-IDF method, um, it's intended to leave only frequent and distinctive words as markers. So each word, TF-IDF relevance is a normalized data format and adds to one. And these these marker words are are fed into a neural network as features in order to determine the topic covered by the document. And um, I just put that little formula in there, and um, it just basically um, is is what's used to um, to compute the TF-IDF score. Uh, next slide, please. And again, um, I'm, you know, we're just summarizing these briefly in this in this little you know tutorial here but we consider these in you know in considerable detail in the actual uh, course and then there's words of vec okay um which um are, are two layer neural networks that are trained to reconstruct the linguistic context of words okay which is you know um so and, and it's very th this one okay so word to vec takes as its input a large body of text and produces a vector space of, of literally of of hundred uh, can, can be of hundreds of dimensions. I know we've used this and um, and with each unique word in the corpus being assigned a corresponding vector in the space. And the nice thing about this is that word vectors are positioned in the space so that words that contain a common context in the in the, the text 
and they, and they call that corpus, so I should probably use that word, but <laughs> basically the body of text are located in close proximity to one another in the space. Now, um, and, and it's good in that sense, right? So, so if two words are close, like, you know, like bull and, and you know, for bull market and, and rally, you know, they will end up, their vectors will end up being, being very similar. One of the problems, okay, with 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 this method and, and we've run into it and, and this is where the course is useful because you'll see you know where these problems come up is it doesn't distinguish the different meaning of words with the same token so for example um the word bank can relate to a financial ins institution or a river bank okay traditional word to vec couldn't capture this granularity so for example and when i and i mentioned the word bull like for bull market it would in, in general, if you use, you know, generic, you know, word to vec, it, it, it would look at bull more like an animal than a market, you know, statement, right? So, I mean, and, and in fact, we've had to, and you'll see, you know, to, you know, build, you know, d different methods for dealing with this problem. Now, um, and um, yeah, and the last thing to say about word to vec here is that it trains words against other words that neighbor them in the input corpus and um, it does so using context to predict the target word um, and um, and we'll talk about again the course we'll deal with this in some detail um, using method called continuous bag of words or using a word to predict the target context um, which is called skip gram uh, next please um, just a heads up terry that uh, we have a couple of questions <laughs> okay uh, Okay, so uh, Arvind is asking, it would be great if these concepts can be shown uh, practically how to and where to apply. Yes, and um, um, how to and where to, I mean, that, yeah, we, we, th if we started doing this, we would take all morning, right? I mean, uh, that's really <laughs> what the course is, no, that, I, that, that's what the course is about. What I'm, I'm actually, and I thank Arvind for the question because what I'm trying to do is, is you know is is illustrate what the course will do for you right is you know is, is show you just that okay uh arvind uh just to uh heads up that the our uh, another, another speaker ishan will be covering a short part of that uh of your questions so you can get back and another question terry we have is that uh, i've organized it to you over the uh, panel uh, i will just spell it out again can we say bag of words are used to find similarities between documents and uh, tf idfs are used to find differences that's a question uh, i understand that bag of words can be used in the sense one document increase the value the other document should but how does tfidfs be used to find the value of equity or a stock well let, let me take the first question anything that can be used to find similarities i think can be used to find differences right what it, meaning in a sense that right meaning so let's let's just say that um uh, that in the word to vec situation right if the same words you know if, if if there are are many commonality between frequencies of words in various doc in in you know across documents they're similar so we had three documents in the bag of words example right um if if two of them had more frequent word counts right they'd be more frequently, um, you know, they'd be judged more similar than the other. Uh, then in the TF IDF, okay, we don't care about all the words, right? What we care about are words that are, that are not common, that are, and, and we'll talk, and when we get into that, you'll see how they're filtered out. I mean, when we actually, you know, um, in, the, in the course, but the idea being that, that, you know, all the common words like the and and, and 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 even more than that that are used a lot in in every document get thrown out and the important words are are the ones that are um used less frequently now the second question is is a more complicated question right once you have that meaning I, the question being how do you 
how do you take those words and find out whether they're important for the equity market? That's a, that's a whole different problem, okay? That's actually mapping sentiment scores onto market movements or uh, and, and such. And there, um, you know, you first get the, you know, the, the words and, and, and then you look at the relationship between those words and, and whether markets move involving a whole other set of techniques, again, which are actually shown and we didn't highlight them that in 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 this little webinar but the point is is that a good chunk of the training course involves studies that have been done to do that right meaning you have to build a relationship between you know between words and what you call sentiment and and market moves and that's how sentiment well there are other ways it can be done but one of the ways is to, to map sentiment is that the other is to just take a human right and say is this article positive negative or or you know a sentiment and associate that with the words except that when you have a million like you, you, the demonstrations that that are in the course when you have a million cases it would take humans an awful long time to assign sentiment scores to those so yeah i hope i answered your question but it was a little complicated question because it involved two levels of of analysis Yes, yeah, so the uh, extension uh, to the answer that you gave, um, uh, the same uh, question person is asking uh, at least one example, if not multiple examples, please. All right, so for example, it, what, and this is in the course because this is really what we did, right? Is that, you know, we, you know, we looked at, you know, at, at the output of the of let's just say the TF IDF it ended up being more complicated Elmo and, and what other methods but basically we map the output between well yeah let, let me say I'll, I'll simplify it's a little one more step but we map the output between the change in the the words right and the change in the market the following day right so we took you know these words and and you know and and did the market go up down or remain neutral the next day and by doing this over and over again like and again i'm talk, talking like you know a, a million headlines okay and it, you know the noise of the words sort of cancel themselves out leaving the important words associated with with the way the market moves then and that's just a training set right once you have that right then you go into the test set where you start saying okay now i have my sentiment and what happened today using the sentiment scores attached to the words that i've actually trained the model on and when i sum up all the sentiment does it tell me that the market's going to go up the next day down the next day or neutral and um and then i go long if it's positive sentiment short if it's negative and neutral and in fact the results of those studies are are literally presented in the course okay that's great terry uh, just a heads up guys if you can just uh, hold on to your questions we can take things ahead there are still a couple of more questions terry if you can clear that <laughs> out and we will be holding the questions for this part as of now and we'll be taking the questions uh, uh, once in again in the middle of session. So uh, a question from Emmanuel is uh, given that the bag of words uses equal length of words Would that not cause loss of information therefore give uh, unreliable results? Say the first part you get that, that the, the uses yes, uh, yes, it's given that the bag of words yes. uses equal length of words would that not length. cause loss of information? What is equal length of words? What is that? I'm, I, I just didn't, yeah, I'm having trouble understanding what that means. Uh, so basically what I understand is if there is a statement uh, entire and as the bag of words uh, negate the grammatical part. So uh, Emmanuel is asking if you, if there are only selected words uh, in that bracket, would that, would not that give an unreliable results? Well, I hope Emmanuel is right. Again, you know, the, whew, the bag of words. Well, when you say, the only reason, the only reason I say it is because the question 
the results really right are are one's ability to take words I'm, I'm just wondering what he means by results for me the results are the ability to take words and predict so sentence. basically uh, Emmanuel has uh, texted up that he mean the dimension of the output by results he mean the dimension of the output okay the dimension of the output well um, and and you're giving up information I, well, you give up information about context and whatever. Yes, there are many problems, um, you know, I, I will say in limitations. And I would say as as regards, you know, these techniques, bag of words is probably one of the more primitive methods, but it, it was really the start on which things were built, right? So, you know, um, yes, it's got its limitations and, uh, and you know, Yes, so we'll just say that. I mean, as we, and and you, you will see again in the course. I mean, again here in in this, and it isn't that I'm you know want to neglect this, but um, you know these are these are complicated. In the course, we will actually see what it takes, okay, to, to effectively use language to predict market moves, and it takes a very complicated model, much more complicated than than these, but they form some of the basis for what's done. Um, and even there, you know, we get, and, you know, and, and again, you know, this is ongoing work, but we only are able to predict which way the market goes 60% of the time. Now that's a big edge, right? But I think that, you know, with, with better methods and whatever, we would do better. Okay. So all of these methods have limitations and, um, some have more than others. And, um, I hope I answered the question without you know, really getting, you know, too technical and, um, but, you know. Okay, no worries, Terry. Uh, just to help you out, are you able to see the questions on the panel? No. Okay, so uh, what I would suggest on the right-hand side, if you can see the drop-downs, that is uh, webcam audio dashboards. Can you see that? Webcam audio Audio da dashboards, questions, attendees, polls, and chat. No, I see chat, polls, questions. Yes, I see that. Yeah, okay. So uh, yeah. when you click the question spot, uh, rather than closing it on the left hand oh, side, wow. just beside close, you can just click on that and the questions will be available in front of you. Yeah, I can only see four. I don't know how many. Oh, there are a lot of them. Wow. Okay. You, the last question you only have to answer is for this Mr. Uh, Sunil Kumar, who had asked, uh, will bag of words model counts the unnecessary words like vowels, filler words, because that can make any document similar? Can you see that question? No. At the bottom, at the bottom. Just scroll down to the bottom. Okay, here we go. I mean the dimension. I yeah. see Emmanuel's thing is what I have at the bottom. Oh, I, but is, is this Sunil Kumar Ampolo? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, That's at, the at the bottom. Okay. Will bag of words model count, count the unnecessary words like vowels, filter word, filler words? because that can make any document similar. Yes, I think it does, yes, but that won't, but, the, I, but I believe that, that that gets normalized out in the sense that, 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 if you have a bunch of documents and they all have those words, um, and in fact, that's what TFIDF excludes, right? Um, they'll be there, but two documents, let's just say I have three documents and they all have ands and these and, you know, whatever, right? And um, they're all going to be similar there, but it's the other words that will make them more similar or less similar, right? I mean, and now, and, and this is an area that 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 we didn't study because by the way these methods can be used for a lot of things right like the, you know one of the things that we we're not going to i hope i don't get too long in this answer but one of the things we're not going to study here in this course is is what is, is the other use of nlp where uh, there are a few more but you know for like the one that comes on your phone when you start typing words and it suggests other words, okay? Um, you know, we're trying to take 
words and assign them to um, to whether something is a positive or negative sentiment. That isn't that's a different application than on your phone. And um, and so um, you know in, in our work, things that are that are very common like that across all documents will end up being irrelevant for predicting um, which way the market is going because they're there all the time. And so they're there and when the market goes positive and they're there when the market is negative and the model will say they don't mean anything. So it's not a problem that way. It's a problem in general and that's really where TF-IDF comes in. They just throw them away. I hope that helps. Okay, no worries, Sherry. Uh, uh, so, guys, we'll be taking questions uh, at the later part of the sessions. Uh, let's continue where Terry left off. So, Terry, you can continue with the slide if you want. Uh, okay, the next thing. slide, then. I think we're moving on. I'm almost done. Okay. You know. there you go. Yeah. okay, and again, this is just word, this is a little bit more on word to vec because it uses two things. It, you know, it uses, um, you know, um, bag of words and a continuous bag of words. And it uses, um, you know, it, then it trains them. So um, let's see, do we need to know? Mm, so for example, um, and this gets a little bit to what I was talking about, about, um, about you know, the, the, one of the methods um, that, we, that we're not really using for sentiment data, but, but in general is the network learns statistics from the number of times each word pairing shows up, right? So in, in word to vec so for example, a network is going to get more training samples of Soviet Union than Soviet Sasquatch. So after training, if you give the network Soviet as input, right, um, I, I think there was another line that got deleted, right, um, it would, you know, it would show up, as, you know, the, the suggested next word would be Union rather than Sasquatch. And um, anyway, let's, let's move on. and, and uh, one more, yeah. Okay, and then and then we get to the more complicated models, and these are the ones that it really took, you know. And we're going to get to this, you know, to, uh, to for us to be able to successfully predict, you know, um, which way the market was going to move. And um, and basically, it uses by Elmo embeddings from language uh, model um, uses bidirectional long short term memory, you know, sort of networks, right, to generate features. And, and you may or may not know that. Again, those are talked about in the in, in the course. And um, and basically, um, it, it, be, and it and it goes both ways, positive and negative. So it really learns the the word context um, that that um, in a document and um, yeah, forward. Um, um and, and backward um memory and um and then predict tries to predict the next so and and again this is a, a method which tries to predict the next words given uh previous words and um anyway so let's move to the following i think it's my last slide which is i think bert which is another um and again which is the bi-directional encoder representation from transformers and again you will see these get very complicated using sort of recurrent neural networks um, which again is a whole other complicated um, technique to um, to actually um, analyze text and um, and you know um, basically yeah they, they train bi-directional representations conditioning on you know on both you know left and right context meaning um you know both when it learns sentences it looks both backward and forward and um and it's actually been it's it, it it's really it gets extremely complicated um but it's been the method that we used to predict um um market moves in 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 corporate credit so um i think that's my last slide and uh and again these you know this short presentation um, wasn't involved, you know, <laughs> because these are complicated, it takes time to, you know, to to explain a lot of these things. And this was more um, uh, a demonstration of what you can expect uh, to learn 
um, in in the course and and the topics that will be covered. And I think I'm going to turn that over to Isha now and uh, to talk about sentiment. Unless there are more many more questions, or we'll take them at the end. I don't know, but I, you can decide what to do there. Um, okay. Uh, thank you so much, Terry. Uh, really appreciate your time and efforts. And uh, obviously, like uh, people would understand that it's uh, not something that you would uh, completely get in by uh, three, four slides. And um, for more detailed, <laughs> more detailed versions and questions, you need to get into a detailed understanding of the concepts. Um, so Ishan uh, will be taking over. Um, uh, Ishan, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you and uh, thank you Vedant and Terry for the thank you so uh, much wonderful explanation. So uh, let me actually uh, take the things forward uh, from here on. So and before that, hello everyone and uh, uh, thanks for joining in for this webinar. This is Ashan, uh, uh, your second uh, speaker for this uh, webinar. So uh, let me quickly uh, like uh, tell you like what Terry was actually referring to is uh, he was referring to different uh, word embedding methods and uh, why it is required will be like a lot of questions uh, in uh, your mind so why it is required is because machines are good in understanding numbers and uh, those are actually uh, when you're dealing with uh, the raw news they are actually text so machines find very difficult to understand uh, what this text is all about so uh, this word embedding method is an attempt or makes things uh, from text to numbers which machine can understand and there are different methods which uh, Terry just walk you through like bag of words tf idf uh, and word and these methods are covered in the course so bag of words as most of you are able to find the limitations like there were a lot of questions around the limitations of bag of words so yes, it's correct. It's not the right uh, method to use, but it's a very good method to understand how to convert text to numbers. And then uh, when you move on to a more advanced neural network kind of model, then you are able to appreciate uh, the power of it. So a uh, very layman example is, as you can see on my screen, it's like uh, a text which says, Apple saw strong growth in China emerging markets. That's what the CFO told. So for computer, for the taking this text, it will give it to a word, uh, word embedding method, for example, but, but will convert into a vector or a numerical representation, which will be fed into a machine learning model. And that machine learning model will actually predict this smiley uh, stating like it is a positive thing for the Apple. So that is done for each and every news item, but, uh, this news item can come in at any point in time, right? So, uh, for example, uh, it can come around, say, in the evening, in the morning, when the markets are open, when the markets are closed. So, which all news item we should work with? So, that's the question. So, any ideas? So, uh, should we consider all the news items which are coming in, or how should we go about it? So one very simple explanation is uh, whenever the news item comes in, we just calculate the sentiment score out of it and trade out of it, right? That's the most logical sense. So uh, that is uh, pretty much possible. But uh, generally speaking, when you're creating a low frequency kind of strategy where you just want to trade uh, in a day and just understand, uh, aggregate the news item which are available during the close of the market, uh, then this uh, this slide becomes very important. So in this, uh, what you will do is uh, all the news item which comes during the market close. So uh, typically, uh, the markets are closed uh, between uh, say 4 p.m. to 9:30 a.m. So U.S. markets typically work between 9:30 a.m. to 4 p.m. So that is the red line which you can see on my screen. So that is the that is the duration uh, where the markets will actually be open. So we will only consider the news item which are created before the markets are open. So in this case, we'll only consider the news item which are created between 4 p.m., uh, which is uh, the yesterday's um, 
like 4 p.m. on 14 Jan, which is today's uh, 4 p.m. until tomorrow morning 9:30 a.m. We'll consider all those news items, and for each news item, there will be like classification. Like some will be positive, some will be negative, some will be neutral. So we'll aggregate each of these news items to get a final sentiment score. And uh, once we have a final sentiment score, then if it is positive, then we'll go long on the stock. If it is negative, then we'll short the stock. And if it is neutral, then we don't won't take any trade. So before we move on, let's take a simple poll to understand uh, how we are um, doing. So um, let me start the poll. Um, I guess the poll would have been open. So uh, the question is, uh, you have to calculate the correct sentiment class from the below data, which I will be like, what is the sentiment score on 9.30 a.m. on day two? Uh, 9.30 a.m. is typically when the markets open. So uh, there are four data points for you, like on day one, 3 p.m. when news item came up and the sentiment score was positive, which is indicated by plus one. On day one, again at 7 p.m., another news item came up and the sentiment score was minus one and so on and so forth. Uh, on day two, there was another news item with a negative sentiment score. And finally, uh, at the end of the day, there was another with a neutral sentiment score. So uh, basically, we select an option of whether the sentiment should be positive, negative, neutral, or the data is not sufficient or cannot be determined. So guys, just uh, a heads up that a poll has been opened and a question has been there. If you can just answer the question and take up the poll, we would uh, have a better understanding of your uh, current acknowledgement. So guys, please take a poll. Okay, guys, uh, just a heads up that uh, the question uh, is being a bit uh, subtracted on the statements. We would be uh, heading up on the slides and you can see the questions on the slide. Ishan, uh, Ishan can you please just uh, put up the slide up? Yeah, that, this, this one is the uh, full questions. So guys, if you can see this. Yeah, so uh, just to uh, indicate the sentiment class can be either uh, positive, negative or neutral, which is same as plus one, minus one or zero. So positive is indicated by plus one, uh, negative is indicated by minus one and neutral is indicated by zero. And uh, the question is, uh, if uh, you are just at the open uh, of uh, tomorrow on day two market open, which news item which will consider uh, to trade whether you should consider a positive, negative or neutral or it's the fourth option is cannot be determined. So we've got the polls, 17% uh, are saying positive or one, 34% saying negative or minus one, 29% uh, says neutral or zero, 20% uh, says cannot be determined. Yes, so, um, so yeah, thanks for answer everyone. And as the majority says, uh, they have the correct answer. Uh, and uh, the reason for that is, uh, is uh, we will uh, we are trading on the market open. So we will aggregate all those news items which have come after the market close, but just before the market open. That is between 4 p.m. to 9.30 a.m. So when you look at the question, it is on day one, which is 7 p.m., which is after the market close, uh, this news item which has came up, which is with a sentiment class of minus one indicating a negative thing. So therefore the answer is negative. Uh, now, many of you would have question, why not consider things which have come after market open? So the logic behind that is most of this news item impact would have already been captured in the market and therefore no point in calculating or aggregating those news items. So all these red lines, other times when the markets are open 
and therefore we are not considering that assuming impact of those news item are already factored in and will only fact work with the news item whose impact is not factored in and that is during the market close now let us see how we can actually do this in python so for that um, we will go to this uh, course which is contra dot uh, you can all go to this course uh, this uh, web page which is contra dot dot com and let me also share it with all of you yeah if you can do that i was just about to do that thanks ishan okay all right so uh, i would encourage all of you to actually practice along with me so that uh, we are able to implement the concept which we just learned on in python so so uh, once you follow the link uh, you will come across this page uh, if you already have an account you can log in or you can click on sign up and uh, you can uh, either use your social media accounts to log in or you can just uh, fill out this details to sign up so since i already have a google account i'll just use that and uh, it will actually uh, log in me and bring me to the dashboard uh, then you can go to this all courses and then if you just scroll down uh, in this all courses you will see this second course which is on natural language processing in trading and if you can just click on it uh, there's this free preview option so I'll just wait for a couple of seconds so that um, uh, you can follow me so emmanuel had a question uh, please what class i hope uh, ishan has given answer and give it the link emmanuel i hope you are on the same page am i right Oh yes, Emmanuel is okay. with us. Thank you. So Ishan, and uh, you can see uh, there's a question for you, Suman by Suman Teja. So you can just address it if you want. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Suman, thanks for your question. Uh, Suman says in markets there'll be rumors on many days. As saying goes, buy on rumors and sell on news. On average, most rum rumors are baseless and false. Can we identify authentic news from false using NLP? So actually, that's a very good uh, good question from Suman. He says like how to differentiate uh, false news from uh, actually fake news from the real news. So that's actually um, uh, a known area of research. And for the matter of the fact, there was one fake news like uh, there was like a bomb in White House and the market actually fall and uh, the, it was from a very uh, authentic uh, handle and later on it was found that the handle of that news agency was hacked but markets actually trusted and reacted on that news and later on they figured out that it was a false news and it it, it was like a v-shape uh, kind of stuff which happened like it falled and then it later on realized that it is fake and it recovered quickly so generally it's very difficult if some accounts are hacked and uh, and some news which is very devastating in nature comes out and you have to actually react on that so if that is happening it's very difficult to identify whether the account was hacked or not so that is one thing but things which we can definitely work with is we can actually identify the list of sources which are authentic and uh, remove all those non-authentic sources uh, which uh, which uh, which we can do from the data vendor from which you are getting the news item you can select filter by the sources and only trade if it's from the authentic source so that you can do and uh, second is you can use the power of nlp so nlp has the power in uh, predicting which are like it always gives you the probability of which it thinks can be fake so when it comes to fake, uh, if you have this fake news uh, training data set and if you pass it to this machine learning algos, then they can learn the patterns in it and can give you the probability or the score for it. So that is for the news item. And uh, when it comes to other stuff, so you can also get sentiments from other places like Twitter and from blogs and research. So for Twitter, there is like uh, this famous library in Python with a botometer, it gives you the score. Uh, whether this tweet is a fake or from a bot so that you can use for it 
so so that is it so i am just uh, starting the free preview of this course and in that there is a section which says um daily sentiment score so uh, in this daily sentiment score which is section 4 unit 5 uh, there is this notebook which says how to calculate daily sentiment score so uh, in this uh, daily sentiment score uh, we will actually implement uh, the concepts which we learned uh, just before so uh, for that we will uh, actually import the news headline of apple so um, before this section uh, what we are done is uh, we have used the google news as the source and from that source uh, we have identified the news items which are impacting apple and stored in a csv file and in this notebook we are importing this uh, csv file uh, which has all the news item related to apple or which impacts apple and uh, for each of uh, this uh, row you can see the news headline uh the source uh, the url and uh, the sentiment class whether it is positive or negative or neutral which is indicated by plus 1 0 and minus 1 and the sentiment score which is again between minus 1 and plus 1 uh, which is highlighting the impact of this news so that is the first thing is to read the data from csv uh and the next step is uh, what we doing is we are just uh, working with the columns which we are interested in so we want the time stamp because we want to determine whether that was during the market close or market open and uh, we are working with the sentiment class uh, so that we have filter out other information from it <coughs> and uh, from this information we are using b day method from pandas time series uh, package and what this business day will do is uh, it will tell me uh, so using business day i will be able to figure out uh, whether um, sorry before that what i'll do is i'll actually uh, find whether the news is between 9:30 to 4 if yes then i will flag it as uh, not relevant for me and if it is after 4 pm but 9:30 of the next day then i will flag it like it is ready to use for the next day so that is how i am getting this trading time which is on which time is this news item relevant so that is the trading time and for there will be like many news headline which will be relevant for a particular trading time which i will aggregate it so if there are three news item then i will take a mean of that and that score will be stored here so as you can see for each day now i have a score for it and this score will actually become my and uh, decision point so if the overall score is positive i will uh, go long on apple stock if overall score is negative i'll go short on it and if it is zero then i will be neutral uh, a variant of this is you can uh, uh, you can define the threshold so here i have plotted the uh, variation in the scores a uh, daily variation of the score so it ranges between minus 1 and plus 1 so uh, what you can do is uh, rather than having this zero thing you can have some thresholds so for example if it is less than minus 0.5 that is the place where you can go short on the stock and if it is greater than 0.5 then you can go long on the stock and for all other data points you just don't trade so you can have those kind of refinements uh, to your trading strategy so so that is uh, it from my side of how you can create a trading strategy and uh, before i move on to take uh, the questions uh, from the participants like i and terry will be happy to take the questions uh, let me quickly summarize uh, the learnings from this webinar so uh, from this webinar uh, from this webinar what we learned is uh, there are this raw news item uh, which needs to be fed to a word embedding method um, such as uh, bag of words tf id if but which will convert this text to number which will be then fed to a machine learning model which will give us the sentiment class as the output so whether this news item is positive negative or neutral so for each of this news item we have to first identify which one are relevant for us and which one are not relevant for us 
uh, so the news item which appear during the market close are relevant for us and for all those news item we will aggregate the sentiment class so we'll get a final score for it and if that score is positive we'll go long on the short stock if it is negative we'll short and if it is neutral then we won't trade on it so that's the summary and the most interesting part of this course is how actually machine is able to predict the sentiment class out, out of it so most of you found this easy to map this to a positive sentiment score but will machine find this as easy as you guys to classify this to a positive score so that is where this course uh, brings value because it uses a right from a simple model to an advanced model like bag of words to bird to predict the sentiment class and the uh, accuracy of those predictions so it's a uh, in a way very interesting courses and apart from the uh, learnings how contra will help you is uh, you need not install anything all these things codes are available right in the platform as uh, most of you would have actually uh, run this uh, on the fly with me so for example uh, you can change this on fly and you will see the results change uh, here itself you need not install any specific python environment in your local machine uh, this can run within contra itself and uh, there are this interactive videos uh, which will actually teach you this concepts so for example uh, in this, uh, we'll use uh, proper animations. So, uh, I think in the internet is slow, but uh, the point is uh, we'll use we'll use animation to actually drive you through the concepts, which is higher retention is what we have observed, and uh, all these concepts will be actually shown and implemented in a Python notebook. And to ensure that you actually recollect this, uh, there'll be like coding exercises. So overall, this makes a very good learning experience. Uh, and that's why uh, Contra is preferred by many of the learners. So uh, that is it from my side. Uh, I think uh, Vedan, you can actually take it over and then we can take the questions. Okay, Sean, thank you so much. Uh, so guys, uh, you can have your questions uh, ready and up. And Ishan and Terry would be uh, happy to address them. Uh, a question from Sunil Kumar uh, has uh, been up for Ishan. Um, can you hear me, Ishan? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so uh, the question from Sunil Kumar is, uh, sorry for out of the context question. Um, can, he, uh, can these algorithms detect usage of same word in different context? For example, uh, I'm having fun learning NLP. That is a positive sentiment, uh, and people are making fun of stats. That is a negative sentiment. So, how will the algo classify between them? Uh, yes. So, uh, thanks, Sunil. That's actually very uh, good question. So, uh, that is uh, how the NLP has progressed. So, uh, when you use uh, very simple models such as bag of words or TF-IDF, it won't be able to detect the context of the word. And uh, one of the most uh, recent uh, uh, like um, uh, foundation or uh, of, uh, evaluation by Google is a bird model which can actually able to differentiate the uh, usage uh, of a word in different contexts. For example, uh, the fun in your case, like in the first case, the positive thing and the fun in the second thing is a negative thing. So based on the context which it is used, it will be able to differentiate this. Uh, another example is, uh, uh, this is actually a very good example, but I like to take another example is, for example, what uh, this is like a uh, bucket. So bucket is used in uh, multiple contexts. For example, there is this bucket list of things to do where you are actually referring to uh, the list of things which you want to do. Uh, another is a bucket of water in this you actually mean a bucket which is full of water so when you actually pass on all these things to bot it will be able to correctly identify the context of it and uh, able to give you the relevant uh, vector or relevant interpretation of it which makes this very powerful and uh, as most of us use google for their day-to-day -day, uh, stuff so if you type some words and it will actually give you results which are actually related to the context 
so that is how the nlp has evolved over a time oh thank you so much ishan for the uh, answer uh, i hope sunil you have uh, called the satisfied answer A any questions from uh, other attendees uh, we are open for it i think there was one question from gaurav kumar he says can we scrap data from apps like telegram whatsapp yes, i was going back to it yeah yeah in uh, real time and generate sentiment score so again uh, actually uh, web scraping or scraping any kind of stuff is actually not legal you have to check with the uh, app provider like telegram and whatsapp whether it's allowed or not that is first thing and second is uh, these are the places where most of the rumors or wrong things are spread and uh, sometimes it becomes very difficult to detect for example the example which i gave you uh, like the account was hacked and uh, some news came up which actually resulted in a uh, false alarm so all this stuff will actually be very very prevalent uh, in this channel so it is actually recommended to avoid this channels for any kind of sentiment trading okay thank you so much ishan i hope gorov uh your question has been answered appropriately uh i'm still waiting for the questions guys if you have any questions you can just uh drop down a message and uh we are there to address it and uh okay sunil says thanks for the answer does uh, so another question for uh, ishan is uh, does these algos output a sentiment score and we need to run a classification model on top of it is that how it works Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that's Terry really. I, I, I mean, <laughs> jump in, Sean, if you want to expand. But yeah, the idea is that you know you you have to you know you you have to generate you know the relationship between the text and sentiment, and then the relationship between sentiment and the market moves, and you know and both of those can involve complicated complicated models. And and I'll just give you an example. I mean, you know. Um, I, I ran this with the, uh, you know, the the BERT model on the, uh, you know, like a million items in, in the on the University of California supercomputer, and it took about a day. I mean, so we're talking, and 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 in that was, you know, what we're, you know, we're mapping, you know, news stories to sentiment, and then summing sentiment as Ishan had has described very well, I thought. And then using it to predict, the, uh, you know, the, the the market, and 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 in using it to predict the market, when you took the sentiment scores, we had that was what you mentioned in your question, the, the second model on top of that, which takes the sentiment score and and builds it into. We use the, um, the um, I'm trying to think of what uh, it, it was a, a decision tree model. Um, using l1 and l2 optimization i'm forgetting it's what 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 they call it but anyway um that, that's it so anyway the answer is yes yeah actually i was quite yeah. fun actually we also uh, went through that so typically it has the aggregated sentiment score right and uh, i just roughly told you like you can actually optimize it by using 0.5 but actually 0.5 is not that uh, quite optimized so actually if you employ a machine learning model to actually give you the correct thresholds then it is a pretty good model so in that case if you just have a machine learning model which learns from it and then able to trade then it's much much better and thanks terry actually that was quite uh, helpful okay so um we are having questions from nikhil that is is bird a black box technique or is interpretable to the clients It, it's both. There are there are parts that are clear and there are parts that aren't. Um, I, I have to say that you know one of the people that that worked for me on this problem actually had climbed pretty deep inside Bert because we had to make some modifications. But um, what you'll find, and you know, and I've done this too, is it's very difficult, right, to find written material that describes you know that describes this in 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 any detail except for somebody very sophisticated in in this kind of work so um and in fact you know bert i i would say bert's only been around for a year or two okay and um it's it's that recent that's why i keep mentioning these things keep evolving because 
um, you know, um, you know, there was Elmo and then Bert and and um, and then there are variations of this even. So anyway, the answer is sort of both. Um, okay, and um, and I think I think the only real way you you'll, you really understand this, and it's really puts you at a level of depth beyond my understanding as well, is if you're actually implementing this and and seeing what happens. I mean, there are. I think 13 layers of this BERT model architecture in the neural network. And I know we modified level 11 to take advantage of, of uh, domain specific knowledge, right? Meaning, and, and, that, and that's the other key, right? Is that, you know, it, is that the generic BERT, it just learns generic things about language and doesn't know it's working in a financial context. So you have to, there, I haven't found any any of these systems where we haven't had to do special things to take into account the fact that we're using financial knowledge and words in, in finance don't necessarily map to more common usage. Uh, that's a very good answer, Terry. Uh, so just to uh, give it just to our attendees that the answer given by Terry, there were the key point there was implementation of these uh, models and uh, strategies, what you can say. So basically, uh, learning is a part where most of the people can do it, but the question comes which can uh, differentiate you among the rest is implementation and practice and that is exactly uh, what, uh, what we have been doing in the past uh, decade and uh, where Ishan has shown you the contra section where you can actually practice all the codings and algorithms on the Python notebook and all the models are downloadable over there and um, that is that is something which will give you a hands-on experience of uh, how you can use it uh, all, all these models and strategies to get a better uh, alpha generating strategies and uh, so to complement that uh, it's where where a blue shift model comes into picture where you can uh, work all these models in the past data so uh, you can take a scenario of a particular time and uh, you can check by going back into the date whether my strategy that you have developed would have been given a uh, bullish sentiment or a bearish sent sentiment so uh, that would give you a better understanding and uh, I think uh, the course that's uh, been authored by Terry uh, has beautifully depicted all all these kinds of model in a detailed version as he as uh, he mentioned there are about 13 levels which is a kind of impossible to do um, during these kinds of uh, webinars so it's just kind of a gist that we generally do to uh, all all um, you attendees so that you would get a, a hands-on experience of what these are and what we can assist on to to get a more uh, detailed version of it and to get a much better understanding so basically what I can understand the questions that you guys have been asking uh, if you can go through the NLP course and um, uh, go through it entirely you would be able to answer it by yourself um, that is what I believe because it's been so uh, nicely written and authored by uh, Terry uh, a couple of more questions I have uh, from Muhammad is um, I would please like to ask for your opinion on using the sentiment analysis in a time series analysis setting as a dummy variable so any of the speaker can answer yeah, I mean, I would say, so the, uh, what you're really saying is add it to, you know, to a model and every day, you know, sentiment being one, one input in a, in a, you know, in a time series model and maybe, and in fact, you have sentiment even over a bunch of days and you're summing them in some way. Um, if that's the question, I, I, I haven't tried it, but uh, yeah, I mean, why not? So he's giving uh, he's giving an example like uh, if you want to consider a stochastic control problem. So how would you, that is the extension of the question? Yeah, I, I don't know that I can answer that um, because I'm not I'm not actually sure what the state of the art of stochastic control mechanism models are like. I'm a financial quant, so um i so i need some more details i wouldn't you know meaning in terms of you know what the kind of model is to know but uh 
it, okay so uh, he is actually extending his question like you can for example set positive values for the expectations positive values for the expectations you can set positive so you can see those questions in the uh, box that i mentioned oh. so it would be easier for you okay oh you can for example okay i see that said mm -hmm. positive values for the expectations I, again, I know I it, it, I I, can't, I I apologize, but I just can't understand what what the expectations of 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 the the output of the model. Um. So actually, uh, what I can do is I can actually uh, throw some uh, pointers. Uh, maybe you can try it on your own, uh, Mohammed. So uh, basically, uh, definitely, uh, you can do some kind of uh, time series analysis. So basically, a uh, typical uh, simple way to do it is uh, basically you can get the scores and find some kind of relation or correlation between it and stock prices. So that kind of analysis will actually throw some colors on it. And uh, that will actually help you uh, understand uh, how powerful this is. And another is you can also analyze the impact of the sentiments. Uh, on the future uh, prediction. For example, uh, are the sentiments valid for a day, two days, or how long this impact lasts? So if you can do some kind of uh, correlation uh, between this two, I think that will be a pretty uh, useful research uh, in your case. Okay, thank you so much, Ishan. Uh, so guys, I would, be, um, I would be sharing a link again for the course analysis uh, along with, uh, a code uh, where you can see on the uh, screen i would say it's kind of a you can see a discount code where you can go ahead and uh, put in the code as you can see here a webinar nlp and the link above mentioned over there which can give you a 30 percent uh, flat discount and that's a limited limited time offer so just to uh, run you through again that um, what you would be able to do if you go through this course which is uh, say eight hours advanced level and the best part of this course is that um, you don't have any time uh, foundation for it it's it's completely on you whenever you get a time you can just log in learn and basically evolve and adapt and overcome that's what a coach says right guys so um, again if you see uh, the model that you would be able to do is train a machine learning model to calculate a sentiment from a news headline uh, and uh, you would be able to describe the applications of uh, natural language processing and the four models that we um, have gone through here bag of words uh, tfidf uh, word to vector and bert so uh, after doing this course, you would be getting a hands-on experience to predict the stock returns and bond returns from the news headlines, and you would be able to automate and paper trade the strategies which uh, would be covered in the course. Um, Ashwin asked by a question, when do we receive the certificate? Uh, it's uh, answered above that it will be sent to you uh, over an email. So uh, I think by tomorrow you should receive it and um, anybody have any other questions you can just uh, let us know we are there okay so paranjit has a question can you share the python code Nishan, can you uh, yeah so um yeah sure paranjit so uh, for that uh, you can um, just share the link uh, with everyone and uh, I think uh, if you follow the link uh, you will get uh, that code so I'm just sending it to all so uh, if you follow this link uh, you will be asked for a login if you are not already logged in uh, otherwise you will be straight away taken to the course uh, to the notebook okay so a uh, Roshan has a question again as he had asked about and uh, I'm sorry Roshan I just missed it out on that part uh, it's a question to both of you Ishan and Terry any recommendations on books for NLP if you can yeah hmm. uh, 
Um, think... What I yeah, go ahead. You very good. Yeah, you go ahead first. Well, um, I haven't found any books read front to back. I'm trying to. Uh, I mean, there are a number of books I've gotten, and and I haven't read any. Um, you know, um, from front to back. I mean, for Python, right? I've gotten you know Python machine learning and. And I've and I've taken you know pieces out of a few books. Um, I'm trying to I'm looking at my library right now, trying to you know look at at the ones I bought. But the point is, um, in in and I, I haven't seen the course material, but I have prepared a a, a a lengthy list of articles. Most of the things that I've learned have come from reading the articles, and the articles that are cited. Um, in the uh, in the material that that I at least have provided um, uh, uh, to Kwantinsky and um, I'm and I would hope uh, would be made available but uh, anyway but but in terms of just reading a book and um, and and learning um, yeah I don't have anything I really would recommend but um, maybe uh, Ishan has a has one I sort of just learned hands-on and and so forth. And again, to, but I, you know, in in using books for more for reference than for um, than than to read through and 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 understand. I don't think. Well, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Sean? Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, there are some like old books like uh, NLP, uh, Schrodinger's Guide and uh, other stuff but uh, actually i didn't found the books to be that useful because it was more uh, theoretical in nature and uh, lacking the practical parts of it so actually uh, i will just say that you have come to a right place uh, and uh, rather than books i think a course like this is actually uh, not only teaches you about the theoretical part but also shows you the implementation uh, which is uh, much uh, much better way of learning these things uh, so that is one part of this answer and second is uh, from where actually I learned all this stuff is I actually found this uh, AI dot Google blogs to be very relevant. It actually showcases all their uh, cutting edge models uh, on their this blogs place and uh, another place which you can look out for material is uh, on the research side. So there are a lot of research papers which are published around this and that also becomes a good source of learning. So what I would recommend is you, know, you can do this course, get a basic understanding of NLP and to build on top of it as a part of continuous learning, you can actually follow this uh, top Google AI blogs and other uh, research platforms. Okay, Sean. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, Terry, please go ahead. Well, just, yeah, and just to add, you know, um, you know, what occurs to me, you know, also, and I mean, I thought about this is that I think People try to keep a lot of this secret, right? When they actually, <laughs> no, I'm serious. You know, meaning that's why it's very difficult, you know, to 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 actually find things, you know, good explanations even on the web. And when I don't understand something, I'm usually, you know, try to you know see what's available. And and it's oftentimes very hard to get a hold of the, you know of information that really tells you, you know, that that's where you know a practical course like this where you get your hands dirty with this stuff teaches you more than anything because people won't tell you <laughs> you know that's exactly the point terry you know practice makes a man perfect as as the saying has been going for a long decades and uh, this is exactly what uh, uh, the course provides you uh, the more you practice the more money you can make uh, so with the access once you granted it's a lifetime access you can uh, come down to this portal whenever you want you can learn things and um, You can you can get your hands dirty as said by Terry. I, I completely agree with him um, I have a question from Paramjit again uh, from which source you're getting market data or which news sources and continuing the question uh, Just a continuation of the question as of Indian market which standard data source we can use uh, okay, uh, so Paranjit, uh, actually uh, there are like a lot of players which can from which you can get the news data. So one of them is Th Thomson Reuters and uh, definitely it's on a higher side. Uh, they charge you. Uh, another way is actually uh, you can actually source uh, this uh, news data from News API or WebOS which provides you 
uh, the live um, uh, live recent uh, news item uh, which you can use uh, to get the news data okay so we have uh, a question from sunil kumar which he mentioned above uh, just give me a second. Yeah, the question is can we have multiple sentiments other than positive negative neutral like anger sad interested amusement <laughs> if yes, how do we classify them? Okay, I don't know Dishna, you want to take that I can I, I will say first of all yes Okay, and again you have to build a, a sentiment model one of them as I described earlier, right you can you you can with a human being manually look at every article and classify it or you know or whatever or you can train it right now the question is right is is you know well is how to do that meaning you know jealous um how do you apply that? Meaning, I, I'm not sure what, because uh, I'm a market guy. What, 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 what sort of outcome, you know, I, I would ha be able to attach that to if I were training it. But in principle, the answer is yes. How's that? It's, and it would be no different than, you know, looking at, you know, at, at positive sentiment. How do I determine something is positive sentiment? Right? Even, 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 the same problem. I can either have somebody go through histor history and look at the relationship between the output of my word embeddings and, and, and whether market moves positive, negative, or I can, or I can actually do this with a human and, and say, this article is positive, negative, or, 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 you know, or neutral. And, um, and, and so, um, you know, um, you could do it with, with, with anything else. That's all I guess I'm saying. Uh, yeah, Vishan, actually, would, you, uh, would you care yeah. to add some? Yeah, actually, I agree with Terry. So uh, actually, these are just labels, um, which uh, like uh, in the first case, the, like there are three labels, positive, negative, neutral. Uh, in the second case, there are like many labels, like anger, sad, uh, like uh, in I think uh, amusement and other stuff. So uh, typically, uh, this are possible. It's how you actually structure your uh, training data set. If you have this uh, labels to each of the news item and train your model on it, and uh, definitely it will be able to predict this uh, new sentiments for you and uh, the second part is the application part of it so uh, typically again uh, this uh, this is again an area of research so you have to find the correlation between say anger and the stock price uh, movement so if you find some kind of a positive uh, correlation between them then you can trade in the direction of that movement for example for every anger you find the stock price falling then you actually found a source of alpha for you so again, a good question, and uh, you, I encourage you to actually try it out. Uh, so Ishan, if you can see, Paramjit has extended his question. Uh, uh, can you have a look to the question? Or yeah, sure. Want me to so, um, yeah. I just read it for everyone's benefit uh, yeah. on this uh, webinar. So uh, the first uh, question, actually there are two questions uh, from Paramjit. Uh, first question is, practically speaking, getting the quality data is almost impossible as once uh, you automate trade in such setup, courses are okay as it takes standard clean data, but real world practical application is in very native stage, plus how to trade sentiment score uh, to delta in stock price. So uh, thank you, Paranjit. It's actually a pretty uh, relevant question. So uh, since I think Vedant, you're actually sharing your screen. So can you open this financial data science course uh, page on your um, on your screen? Okay, just give me a second. So if you want, you can take up the screen. So you would be better. Uh, yeah, actually, let me do that. Yeah, so you can, it would be better on uh, guiding up. Yeah, uh, I think you have to stop sharing, then only I can take the screen. Okay, so thank you. Um,
So guys, if you have any questions, we have a two minute window open. After that, uh, we would be proceeding towards the end. So any any reference, uh, just a, a heads up that um, we have shared a link of the course for the NLP and a code for 30% discount uh, on the chat. You can have a look and uh, yeah, share your thoughts and reviews on the same and coming back to the question Ishan. Yeah, take it up. Yeah, uh, so uh, thanks Paramjeet for raising this uh, question. So again, I'd like to summarize the question which is asked for benefit of everyone. So uh, the question he asked is, is uh, the courses like this work on a clean data set, but real life data is not clean. How do we work with that? So, <clears throat> so that is a question and we actually heard this uh, from you and a lot of the learners which are part of our uh, community and the challenges which they are facing and to cater to those challenges we actually recently uh, introduced this course which is on financial data science so in this course you will actually learn how to work with the data which is not clean or which has a lot of problems in it and how you actually rectify that data set for example in sentiment data you can find structural breaks you have these challenges of how to aggregate data how to aggregate categorical data all this and other stuff are covered in this course in a very detailed fashion so so you are right real life data is not clean but it's our duty to actually clean the data so that the output which we get is actually reliable so in that case you can uh, refer to this course that was the first part of this question and uh, second is plus how to trade sentiment score to the delta in stock price so this is again uh, for each of the sentiment score you can actually uh, deploy some machine learning algo such as uh, decision tree exeboost or neural network and uh, based on that uh, uh, machine learning will be able to tell you whether you should go long or short so that is to catch the delta in the stock price uh, terry would like to add anything like uh, what Actually no, I think that was good. Um, you know, I um, I just thank everybody. I mean, I it's, I'm actually very encouraged by the questions and whatever. There seems to be a lot of interest, and um, you know, um, yeah, no, I thought I um, yeah, that's it. So thank everybody and for their attendance. And thank you so much, Terry. I really, really appreciate the time, and uh, I've got a couple of. Uh, uh, recommendations from the uh, attendees that uh, they are thanking Terry and Ishan for this great session looking forward for many much more sessions like this and I really appreciate Terry for your time uh, I understand uh, uh, you being a busy man uh, along with all of us uh, so thank you guys I really appreciate um, the effort that you guys put on and any questions that you uh, have you can um, always email to us at uh, contra at contentsd.com we'll be we will be uh, sharing that as well uh, along with you can go through the link uh, that we have given on the chat and uh, the codes that we have mentioned and i would really uh, like to express a great deal of thanks to terry and ishan again for uh, taking out time for this uh, uh, thrilling webinar and uh, also want to thank all of you guys for taking out your valuable and precious time and joining the uh, successful session I would say which uh, would not have been possible without you all folks uh, thank you so much uh, again let me remind you that uh, we are recording today's webinar and it will be available on our YouTube channel uh, I will be sharing uh, the link as well for the same uh, you can uh, have a look whenever you guys would like to uh, if you have any further questions as I mentioned you can just uh, uh, connect us to uh, contra at contentsd.com and uh, thank you so much uh, for the time guys I uh, really appreciate that uh, all the personal touch and the personal recommendations for the countries and visits uh, uh, guys have been giving me uh, would re would really uh, appreciate it as I would be having records of this so I will be uh, reaching out to everyone if you if I am uh, coming around the corner of your origins uh, thank you so much guys uh, really appreciate that and uh, have a great day ahead and thanks for again for being a part of this successful session bonjour okay. thank you so much bye bye thank you thank bye you. bye, -bye. bye.